You know, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that have been percolating in the media recently. For example, a recent interview conducted with Cat Williams, led by my brother, my friend, my partner in crime on First Take every Monday and Tuesday morning, the one and only Shannon Sharp on his club, Shay Shay Podcast. It's turned into a full-blown cultural phenomenon. We can act like we don't know. People can act like they don't want to admit that. We need to stop. Some are calling this type of interviewing as new media. Everybody's sitting there and talking about, there's very little fact-checking and all of this other stuff. This is what they're trying to say. That's what they're trying to say. I think that's wrong. I think it's wrong to get on Shannon Sharp about that stuff. But stay with me for a second, because right now, at this particular moment in time, before I go any further on this subject, I want to defer for a moment to Golden State Warriors forward and four-time champion Draymond Green, because on numerous occasions in the past, he's referred to himself as the new media. Remember, after Scott Van Pelt of ESPN inferred once upon a time that Green is part of the regular media, he shot back saying this. The good news is, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you're part of the media now and you get to control the conversation from your perspective and I know you'll New be- New media. You, you, I, so that's it. And, and, and Stephen A's part of it, as you said, right? And by the way, go watch the Draymond Green show. I said Stephen A sometimes act like the new media. Sometimes he doesn't. That's on you, but you know, uh, nonetheless, don't just lump me in with media, baby. It's the new media. See, what Draymond was trying to say was this. You have conventional media, usually consisting of scribes, pundits, commentators, etc., who never played the game on the elite level he's obviously played the game at. Therefore, we're absent of a, we're absent of a perspective devoid of the kind of content they're capable of providing because they're in the locker rooms, they're wearing the uniforms, they're actually experiencing some of the things that we chronicle. We're not the ones doing that. So what would we know? And our definition of facts, they may challenge on a number of occasions as being false as opposed to factual. That's essentially what Draymond Green was alluding to. Needless to say, I would refute that to some degree because true reporters, true insiders get the information from the actual sources. So just because you're saying it yourself now doesn't mean that they were wrong to say what they said in the past if they got it from the sources before they disseminated that information. The information is still the information. But that's a subject for another day. Because when we talk about a cultural phenomenon, Understand what transpired with Shannon Sharp and Cat Williams. People have been going off about Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp had to let everybody know, I'm not a journalist. I'm an entertainer. I told him he's more than that. He's a voice. Make sure you understand that. Accept that, Shannon Sharp. But the flip side to it is this. What he's saying is, I'm engaging in conversation. So just like I spoke about Steve Harvey, well, I spoke to Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey came on Club Shay Shay. Kevin Hart came on Club Shay Shay. I gave them the platform. Cedric the Entertainer, Cat Williams, had that luxury as well. I treated them all the same. That is Shannon Sharp's position. Ladies and gentlemen, if it is his position, then he is correct. Because he's not, quote unquote, a journalist. And if he gave others an opportunity to speak, uninterrupted, without necessarily probing investigative questions, if he treated them all the same, then more power to him. But the reason why it's applicable here when we talk about a cultural phenomenon is because I don't recall an article, I don't recall an interview on television, I don't recall a commentator or a pundit speaking on a particular issue or having somebody speak on it and drawing over 50 million views. 50 million. We're talking all-time record. Maybe Joe Rogan once had one a little bit more. When all is said and done, as of the next week or two, it is entirely plausible that the Cat Williams interview on Club Shay Shay will have generated more views than anything 
in history. Period. And when that's our reality, and we start talking about new media, well, what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? You know what it means? It means something very simple. People are not allowing you to define what media is to them any longer. They're telling you what it is to them. And if you want to engage in dialogue about how Cat Williams wasn't factual or he may not have told the truth here about Steve Harvey or he may not have told the truth here about Ricky Smiley or he may have embellished something here about Kevin Hart or a Cedric the Entertainer, what the American public at the very least is showing you and telling you is that what matters to them most is their truth. They don't give a shit about the facts. They care about what they believe based on what you've disseminated. They're looking for dialogue. They're looking for water cooler conversation. They're looking for a discussion to have amongst themselves as opposed to truth. I'm not saying Cat Williams is lying about anything. I'm not saying he's telling the truth. I don't know. What I'm saying is neither do the 50 plus million people who watch the interview, but they don't care. All they care about is that they were entertained and they got something to talk about, to vibe back and forth about, to engage in dialogue, bantering and debate about. And that's all that matters. Why, in God's name, would I turn around bringing that point up and bring up our former president, Donald Trump? (sighs) It's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. Because whether you like it or not, some could compare the actions of Cat Williams to the frequent behavior of the former president who continuously speaks even when no one's calling him out. Donald Trump is a non-establishment person saying and doing whatever the hell he pleases and doesn't give two shits about what anybody has to say. Go back and listen to Cat Williams. Did he care? Did he care about what he said about Steve Harvey? Did he care about what he said about Kevin Kevin Hart? Did he care about what he said about Ricky Smiley? Did he care about how he mimicked and insulted Cedric the Entertainer? He didn't care. And why were people gravitating to him? It's not just because Cat Williams is unbelievably hilarious and one of the elite comedians in this world, if we're being quite honest. It's because he has the reputation of someone who does not care to capitulate to the system. Let's take into account Donald Trump. Four federal indictments, 91 counts. This man could end up being a convicted felon in a matter of weeks or months. God forbid they put him in a zebra suit and put him behind bars. According to our Constitution, he could still run for the president of the United States and win. And win. Because there's nothing constitutionally against that. And while he's had these charges levied against him, his popularity has only grown. The dollars have come pouring into his campaign. That's what he's using to pay all these legal fees. Why do you think Rudy Giuliani and others went to him for help? Because he's the one with the money. Where are you getting the money from? He damn sure ain't spending his own. Donald Trump has gone against the grain time and time and time again. Talked about Jeb Bush. Remember when he was running against the former governor of Florida? No, low energy. Remember Marco Rubio, senator senator in Florida? Little Marco. Remember when Carla, Carla Fiorini was running for the presidency? He said she's a four. They said, what about Cory Booker when he was the president? What about going against Cory Booker? Not a chance. John Lewis, former representative, an iconic figure in the civil rights movement, went on national television. Donald Trump did this. Well, I ain't got nothing nice to say about him. He ain't saying nothing nice about me.
mimicking and making fun of people with disabilities. It doesn't stop because it carries votes. Every time he's insulting, every time, every time he's demeaning, every time he comes across like he doesn't give a damn about what anybody thinks and especially what the system has to say, feel, or think about him, folks in America love it. Cat Williams, no different. We have never heard anybody go off on people during an interview the way Cat Williams called out some of the elite comedians in this world who have been highly successful, multimillionaires, I might add, and Cat Williams talked about them like they were trash. So much so, it offended one of the great ones himself, the one and only Dave Chappelle, who's very cool with Cat Williams, by the way, but felt the need to address and, dare I say, blast Cat Williams for his takedown of his fellow comedians. Listen and look on this full screen as to what Dave Chappelle said. What part of the game is this? He only ethered N-word. He didn't say anything about any of these white boys. None of these white boys function like that. Cat is one of the best painters in the game. So why are you drawing ugly pictures of us? Stop. Hurt people hurt people. But I am a hurt person that never hurt people. And he does it all the time. I didn't hear anything that you did wrong. He didn't do nothing wrong, question mark. Cat didn't do nothing wrong. That's what Dave Chappelle said Friday on stage at the Hollywood Improv. You know it's bad when even comedians are offended. But that's what it has regressed into. Because Cat Williams got the underground on lock. The streets love Cat Williams. They appreciate his definition of candor. They appreciate his interpretation of fact. They appreciate the fact that he basically gives the conventional public the finger. And because of it, it's made him even more of a notable figure than his greatness as a comedian, which was very significant and impactful, by the way even had him. That's how he reminds you or should remind you of Donald Trump. Any change that has taken place in our world has been provoked by the younger generation. You know why? Because I've never met a young person who doesn't want to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it, according to their own conditions, without having to give a damn about anybody. And in the age of digital and streaming, where linear is fading in the mind's eye of people all over this globe, why is that? Because people would rather watch something on their phone or their iPad or their computer rather than watching television. And by the way, they don't want to watch it at 10 o'clock or 12 noon or 3 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the evening. They want to watch it when the hell they want to watch it, where the hell they want to watch it, when they want to watch it, et cetera. They want to do what they want to do. And if you want to appeal to the younger generation, which is a targeted demographic, 18 to 34, 25 to 49, that's what you have to be about. The Democrats call themselves progressives. As if they think progressively and they're forward thinkers. Yet in the year 2024, they're begging an 82-year-old and Joe Biden to come to the rescue because they can't find anybody to beat Donald Trump. That's how bad things have gotten. But it's a reason. And the reason is because the system has been so insidious for so long, people are disgusted with it. The old guard they ain't going for anymore. We thought it was just in politics. 
which explains Donald Trump. Now we see how it's trickled down even to the likes of the Cat Williams of the world. And you know how it goes, right? They may be the ones, but they ain't the only ones. They always beget others. There's always a brethren. There's always an offspring, which means the worst is yet to come. It's just the truth. Live with it.